Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24-7 Well channel, On Point Reviews, all day, every day. Welcome back again, everybody. Happy weekend to my old subscribers. Welcome back yet again. I really want to thank you guys because today we hit 7,000 subscribers. That's right, we hit 7K today, guys. It's only been like, what, a year and two months, basically, since I started. So thank you so much for taking us to 7K, guys, okay? If you have been instrumental in any way to the growth of this channel, I do wanna thank you. And if you are new to the channel, if this is the first time you've seen any of my videos through YouTube, Google, or Facebook, please make sure to hit like and subscribe because just like I said, this is just one of many videos, 400 plus videos. We've got an insane library on pretty much all the perfumes you guys are curious about. We talk about it in a no-hype manner, and I do break it down for you guys, okay? So make sure to hit like and subscribe if you are new. Welcome to the channel as well. Now, this fragrance review is huge, guys, because this review is on the latest fragrance of one of my favorite houses, Point Blank. That fragrance house is Serjoff, guys, and we are going to talk about their latest offering, which is from the 1861 collection. This is none other than Decas. Decas by Serjoff. You guys know the drill. You guys know what's up. You've been telling me, you've been asking me to review this fragrance and here we are today. And if you're wondering what the heck is 1861, what does it have to do with anything? 1861 marks the unification of Italy and Serjoff celebrates the year 1861. They do celebrate the wealth, the beauty, the grandeur of Italy right there, okay? This lineup had three perfumes. This would be the fourth. And all of them are pretty much bangers in the community. These are fragrances that you guys know very well. You've got Naxos, you've got Renaissance, and then you've got Zephyro, guys, okay? Now, this one right here is called Decas specifically because this marks the 10th anniversary of the collection. The first one, I believe, was Renaissance back in 2011. And I did review that. That's a wonderful citrus fragrance right there. And this is, you know, 11 years later where we have Decas. Now the bottle is very inviting. As you can tell, it's got that beautiful 1861 design, but this one is a little bit different because on the sides of the bottle, you got the Italy banners, guys, okay? And that kind of separates it from the others when it comes to the look of the bottle. Now I believe that this inviting design is a gift and a curse to Serjoff, okay? That's my opinion. A, it's a gift because people are going to look at that and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, it's an 1861 and I love Naxos and I love Zephyro and I love Renaissance. And they're gonna buy it primarily because of that, because they look at it and they will, you know, connect their thoughts, their positive thoughts towards the other fragrances from the lineup. Now, the curse is that some people will bring in that same expectation when it comes to Decas right there. Some might not even look at it as a totally new perfume. And even as early as now, I'm seeing people uh, say something like, oh, it's the daytime Naxos and stuff like that. You start hearing stuff like that. And that's because you have that expectation as well. And that might disappoint people if they're thinking about Naxos, if they're thinking about Renaissance or Zafiro coming into Deca. Now, I'm going to start off by saying, guys, forget that, okay? Forget the other perfumes, okay? You gotta look into Decas as its own perfume, guys, okay? Do not link it to Noxos or Renaissance, nothing like that, guys. And the fact that it is a 10th anniversary perfume, that already separates it, right? I mean, they already changed the look, so definitely you're gonna get a totally different perfume right here. Now, I am currently wearing Decas, guys. I've been wearing Decas for the past three days, but I will spray it one more time for you guys at home. Okay, so now that we're not going to be talking about Naxos, Renaissance, and Zafiro, let's talk about Decas right here. Decas actually has very, very intriguing notes, guys, okay? And these are notes that when you see them, you're going to be like, man, what an interesting combination. I'm sure a lot of you back home, when you saw Decas getting released, you guys were saying, man, what does this smell like? Actually, some of the other fragrances that I've smelled recently, they do have clickbait notes. Cacao, tobacco, uh, boozy stuff, you know, like those are pretty clickbait stuff in the community, gourmand. But this fragrance right here, I think is the antithesis of that one because when you look at Decas, 
I'm sure that a lot of y'all are like, man, I wonder if I'm really gonna like this. You've got Tuberos, you've got Oris, and these are what I would call 50-50 notes for a lot of the guys. Once you look at that, you're like, oh shoot, Tuberos, I remember the last Tuberos I smelled, oh, it wasn't for me, it smelled so femme, yada, 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 yada. And of course, you've got Iris, which is, you know, not for everybody as well. But here's the thing, guys, okay? Fragcom is just an itty bitty bitty portion of the entire population, and Surjoff is all about Italy, guys, all right? It's all about that Italian grandeur, that spirit, that beauty, that wealth. That's what they're about, guys, okay? So they're not going to pull out these clickbait notes for you guys, and they're pretty much gonna do what they're gonna do. And that's what they pull off right here in Surjoff Decas. You're gonna get, in Surjoff Decas, one of the most impactful and unique openings ever. And I'm saying this right now, ever. This opening is pretty unique because it's all about Calabrian Mandarin, tuberose, and tobacco, <laughs> all right? Whenever I put it on, I'm just like, oh man, it is so damn good. Now I know some of you guys fear tuberose right here, so let me explain it for a second right here. Now the 1861 collection is all about citruses, guys, and in this case, they went with Calabrian Mandarin. This Calabrian Mandarin note to me is an immediate curve, but it does give you some sparkle. It gives you some sort of sparkling uh, elegance right here with this fragrance, with the top notes. You've got a nice manly curve. It's pretty masculine to me with this Calabrian Mandarin. And then you've got the tobacco, which pulls it to the polar opposite of like bright, and citrusy. This tobacco accord is actually pretty amazing because it's not overdone. It's probably one of the most well-blended tobacco notes out there or accords out there. This one smells so good. It pulls you right in the middle. It's a balancer right here, guys, okay? When you spray this fragrance, you're gonna get the sparkling Calabrian Mandarin, and then you've got this sort of like base of tobacco, you know, that is so manly, guys. And right in the middle, guys, is your super well-blended tuberose, guys, okay? And the tuberose does not come on its own, but it is a bright springtime floral, guys. And what you get here in the intro is basically a tug of war. It's a tug of war where you have these polar opposites. You have these bright notes and then these curve, not so bright notes, sort of doing a tug of war here in the intro. And to me guys, straight up, like the moment I smelled this, I thought about two things. Number one, I thought about 40 knots, right? And on my review of 40 knots, I talked about the marina, okay, here in LA, about how the 40 knots perfume is one of my favorites when I do go down to the marina, when I do go down to the beach, seaside, you know, eating at my fancy restaurant down there. But this one right here, this one takes me out of LA and brings me right into Monaco. All right, Monaco is where it's at. This fragrance brings me to Monaco. Why? Because A, it's elegant, it's masculine, but at the same time, it is super duper balanced, guys, okay? Because you have this tug of war of these notes right here. I'm thinking about the marina, but I'm thinking about a European marina, okay? Because this fragrance, right from the get-go, gives you the Euro vibes, okay? This is a Euro vibe perfume. If you miss Europe and you're in America and you miss going to Europe, you miss going to Italy, this might bring you back right there. Or if you miss Monaco. Because it has this really balanced intro, I really feel that this fragrance is one of the best indoor outdoor fragrances out there okay this is a fragrance that you can play both sides you can go to the marina and then you can go back to the casino resort now here in america guys if you guys love vegas or any type of luxury resort spot here in america you're gonna love wearing decas as you go because it's the ultimate indoor outdoor perfume you could be outside enjoying the sun you could be sunbathing you know sipping on a mojito and then you decide to go back inside you decide to play the slots or some blackjack or hang out with your friends go to a fancy restaurant you want to go back up to your room and make some loving 
you can do all of that wearing decas guys okay next we're going to talk about the mid notes but i do want to say something guys that the mid notes basically set up the bass notes and what's here in the bass notes you've got your musk i'm going to just say this in advance that if you loved musk ravageur for example you might want to look into this fragrance right here okay so i just want to say in advance it sets up the musk later on now what do we have in the mid guys we've got oris right here guys and as you guys know oris sets up the powdery uh tone of the fragrance right here and we all know musk is powdery vanilla is powdery so the oris basically sets it up you do have your benzoin right here and then you have your opoponax which is basically myrrh and in my opinion guys these two notes basically just sweeten the deal it continues from the calabrian mandarin the calabrian mandarin is your brighter sparkling sweet uh, note right there in the beginning and then these two notes your myrrh as well as your benzoin continues on from there and just makes it a sweet powdery deal and let's not forget that while the mid is doing that the tobacco is still there okay so don't imagine like a femme type of thing with oris and sweet stuff just remember that you still have that tobacco from that original opening part and all of this, like I said, just sets up the base where you have musk, okay? And that's why I brought it up. And I said, man, if you're in a luxury hotel and you want to, you know, do some loving upstairs with your girl, you can definitely do that because you got musk. The musk right here is just balanced. It's sexy. It's sweaty, <laughs> right? But it's set up by sweetness. That's the thing. So it's also a balanced base part here with your musk with your vanilla and your balsam notes it's really nice i mean it's really classy really really classy really really gentlemanly but like i said it is a euro vibe perfume this one will take you to europe not america not anywhere else because it's gonna bring that classiness it's gonna bring that air of europe guys like i said this one right here is incredibly blended guys okay like right now outside it's actually 88 degrees here it's a hot day today here in cali i still wore it and i was completely fine with it why because even if it has myrrh and amber you do have tuberose you do have your mandarin that just it just pulls it back and then the musk is like this real nice powdery uh slightly like sweaty musk and it's great this one right here can be misunderstood if you're coming from the 1861 line and you're thinking about renaissance and you're thinking about naxos and probably even zafiro you might misinterpret this fragrance right here so i'm trying to set it straight for a lot of y'all that probably misinterpret this fragrance because it's not going to be a linear thing that's going to be you know worn all the time and you're going to be like oh yeah this is an easy citrus grab or this is an easy tobacco grab no it's neither guys this one is truly a 10th anniversary perfume and of course if you're gonna go 10th anniversary like if you have a 10th anniversary dinner with your wife where are you gonna go mcdonald's you're gonna go to mcdonald's you're gonna go to wendy's no you're gonna go to il pastiao you're gonna go to bestia you're gonna go to matsuhisa and that's what this is this is a matsuhisa of the surge of 1861 line so obviously it's not gonna be your linear easy to understand fragrance right here but i'm telling you guys is different once you wear it okay spraying it on your wrist or on a test strip won't do it justice you gotta wear it to really feel that you know monaco italian marina feel right there that i felt and to me like i said i really thought about a luxury resort going back indoors and having this fragrance perform as well now this one here to me is powdery and it is a lingering scent right here and to me this one lasts quite a while you know seven plus hours for me guys and i think that it is also great for outdoors if you're thinking about doing that i think that when you wear it outside is gonna represent you as a classy rich dude that's the smell i mean if you are planning to go on tour because you know the pandemic is slowing down this is one of those fragrances you should take with you if you do wear louis vuitton loafers you wear a rolex and your nice standard 
tourist polo. This will work for you guys when you go out there to Monaco. Now, is this unisex? I think it is. I think that the women can wear this as well because it's incredibly balanced, but I don't know. For me, when I sprayed this just for myself, I really automatically imagined where I would wear it, which is really, really cool. Like it hit home so quick that, you know, even with the mysterious combination of the notes, I'm, I'm like tuberose, uh, mandarin, what the heck is going on, oris. I mean, once you spray this on yourself, like I said, is really going to make you think, man, I gotta go on vacation somewhere nice with my polo, with my Rolex, with my loafers. I gotta go. That is it. That is my review of Sergeoff Decas. This is the 10th anniversary perfume from the 1861 collection. Hopefully that gives you guys some clarification and hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you have Decas or the sample guys, please let me know in the comments what you think of Decas. I believe it's already available on the Sergeoff universe for 150 euros or something like that. And I know that is also on their sample set, guys, okay? And if you saw my house video on Serge Off, I mean, go with what I told you guys, okay? Go with the sample set, get a bunch of these samples of all these perfumes I've been talking about so you can try it, so you can see if it is for you without putting yourself in financial ruin or in a hole by buying tons of full bottle fragrances that you're really never gonna wear. The thing about Serge Off, though, is a lot if not all of their fragrances are extremely usable and wearable. So that's the thing. That's the dilemma you guys are gonna have once you smell a lot of my favorite Serge Off fragrances. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Again, do not forget to like and subscribe. Join the Serge Off group and have a great day, everybody. Peace.